Okay, let's pick up where we left off. What we started talking about here is there's the three types of accounts, asset liabilities, and owner's equity. Now, it depends on what type of what you're dealing with here as to whether or not it is an increased to debit it an account, right? Debit is always left side, left side, left side, left side. If you're dealing with an asset like cash, which is something I like to talk about a lot because cash is cash, no question that that is an asset. To increase the asset of cash, you're going to debit it, which is left side. To decrease the asset of cash, you're going to credit it. So if you got cash, it's going to be a debit to cash on the left side. If you spent cash and cash went out of the door of your business, that is going to be a decrease to the asset of cash and it's going to be on the right side. Now let's talk about liability. Well, I'm going to let me do one more. Let's say you got land. Land is clearly an asset to you, right? You might still owe money on it. That would be a liability, a mortgage, but the asset of cash, the asset of a land is still going to be here. So if you got land, it's going to be an increase to land, which is a debit. If you sold land, that's going to be a decrease to land of a credit. Okay, so you get the idea for assets. Let's talk about liabilities for a second. Let's say you have no bills at all right now. Absolutely, you owe nobody anything. You're completely at zero. If you got a bill in the mail, here it comes as a utility bill came in the mail. That's going to be an increase to your liabilities. So it's going to be a credit. So in order to increase a liability, it's on the right side, which is a credit. Now, say you know you got a liability in here. And you'd put in an amount of, say, $1,000 here, and you've got a liability of $1,000. Now, when you go and you write a check and you spend the money in to pay off this liability, it's going to be a decrease to your liabilities. And it's going to go on the left side. It's going to be a debit. So whereas a debit increases an asset, it decreases a liability. So it all depends on what you're talking about here. Now, for owner's equity, the way I like to think about it is, think about it. These are the, this is your equity in the business as the owner of the business. So anything that brings the value of your business up, revenues that you earn, any gains, um, if the owner puts money into the business themselves, that's capital coming into the business. That's going to increase the value of your business. Now on the flip side, things that are going to decrease your value in the business, if you've got expenses, which of course you'll have expenses because you have to run a, you have to have expenses to run a business, they're going to be decreases to the value of your business. Dividends. Dividends are when you pay out, um, pay out to the owners. That's going to decrease the value of your business because it's money coming out of your business. Um, any losses are also going to decrease the value in your business. Okay, so now that we've done a basic discussion on what these accounts are, I think it's time for us to actually look at this, the PowerPoints from this chapter. If you're using the PowerPoint slides to look through, well, I'm just going to be going through them. Um, several of these we've talked about. This is a T account. Debit is the left side of the T account. Credit is the right side of the T account. Um, let's get back to the ledger and chart of accounts conversation. Um, some examples of assets. I mentioned that there are going to be examples in your book. These are the things that you normally see. Cash, supplies, uh, buildings. These might be ones that you're not really so sure of. So let me explain them for a second. Accounts receivable is money that is due to you. Okay, It's a very common term in, account, term in accounting. Accounts receivable. If you, um, if you think about it, it is money... you that is due to you, you're due to receive. So in that case, it is an asset to you. So going back to that whole lawn mowing example from the previous set, um, from the previous cast, if you were to mow a lawn and somebody were to pay you right away, that would be great. You'd earn revenue, you'd get some cash, okay? But let's say the people aren't home and you mow their lawn. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to send them a bill. When you send them that bill, basically they owe you the money, and it's an account receivable. It is money that is due to you. Liabilities. Like I said, for your purposes right now, anything with a payable on the end of it is going to be a liability to you. But just to give you an idea of what's here, um, whereas before you had an account receivable, here you have the flip side of it, an accounts payable. Accounts payable is when you owe somebody money when you're running your business. So maybe with back to lawn mowing, maybe you owe the gas company, uh, the Exxon on, this, on the corner, that you owe them um, you owe them money for for them providing gas to your guys all week long. Okay, that's going to be an accounts payable. Uh, utility bill that comes in the mail. That's going to be an accounts payable. You needed those things in order to run your business this month, and you owe them money. So those are all going to be accounts payable. Wages payable, notes payable. Any of these things, are, any of the 
any of the things with the word payable on the end, you're going to automatically know as a liability, at least for the beginning, at least for financial accounting. Uh, stockholders equity, we discussed that. Um, revenues. Now this book, I always say revenue, and you'll hear me say it in these slides, revenue, revenue, revenue. But really the book uses a number of different terms for revenue. Revenue could also be referred to as fees earned, commission revenue, rent revenue, you could have sales revenue, you could have interest revenue, you can have a number of different revenues. If you've got the word revenue on the end of it, you're, you're pretty much okay that it is revenue, but the one that always seems to throw people as fees earned is also revenue. Okay. Um, now, to the extent when you're earning revenue, you earn revenue, you, cut, you mow the lawns, every time you mow a lawn, regardless of when you get paid, you earn revenue. Now, the offset to that revenue are expenses, and the expenses are supposed to be matched against the revenues. That is called the matching principle, from which, we just, which was in Chapter 1 a little bit. The idea here is that to the extent that you needed to have these expenses in order to earn that revenue, it should get matched against that revenue. So if you made $10,000 this month, but you had to spend this much money in wage expense, and this much money in rent expense, and this much money in utilities expense, and miscellaneous expense, any of these expenses, you needed to spend that money in order to earn that revenue, then it's going to be an expense of your business, and it's going to be on an income statement. Okay, this is a much more detailed version of um, <laughs> of what I did on your little on the little paint screen there um, with my T accounts. This, if this helps you, then that's just wonderful. But I think you can get by just fine with my three little asset liability owners equity T accounts. Okay, let me scroll through these quickly. Okay, I'm gonna let. Well, as you're recording entries, what what happens is. All month long, things are happening in your business. You're cutting a lawn, you're paying a bill, you are sent a bill, um, you go out and you buy a desk for your office. All of these things are going to be items that are going to require a journal entry. And a journal entry is basically going to be a debit to one account and a credit to another account. Those are called journal entries. And as we do these things, they're as you're doing for recording journal entries, the process itself is called journalizing. You like that? They kind of go together there. <laughs> um, but as you're recording these things, each recording is going to be in what's considered general journal. And general journal is almost like a master account, which has every single debit and credit that's going to be out there. All right. So as we go through these, um, we're going to go through some of them. I don't think I'm going to go through all of them. We can read through some of them, but I will start off. We'll go through a couple of these. So here are these scenarios. On November 1st, Chris Clark deposited $25,000 in the bank account in the name of Net Solutions in exchange for capital stock. Now from the business's perspective, what the business got was $25,000 in cash. Right? Cash is an asset. So if the business got $25,000 in cash, you're going to increase the asset of cash with a debit. All right. You may want to pull up that information or print screen or whatever, that, or re write it down, your, pause and write it down yourself, those slides from the very beginning of this section that I, that I had drawn up, um, because you're going to use it quite a lot. So anyway, so the business got $25,000 in cash. That is an increase to the asset of cash, which means it's debit. Now on the flip side, the business gave out capital stock. Well, if somebody's putting money into your business, it's basically they're contributing into your business. They're bringing capital into your business. Now, if you look at that owner's equity T account, on the far right side, you saw a credit, or on the right side, an increase to owner's equity, which is a credit to capital stock. And here we go. Here's the journal entry. And you see how journal entry is to the left is a debit, to the inset to the right is a credit. All right, here's your debit, here's your credit. The idea here is that every entry is going to have at least one debit and at least one credit. It could have six debits and one credit, or one debit and six credits. It doesn't matter, but it at least has to have one debit and one credit. And the entry itself, the dollar amounts, must match. Okay. And that's what it looks like from a T-account perspective. I said cash is an increase of 25000 and credit on the capital stock side. Now you see these look like the T accounts we talked about. These T accounts actually come from what's called the general ledger. Now as things are happening all month long, you're getting in, you're, you're preparing journal entries into the general journal. 
right? Every time you have, every time something happens, you've got a debit, you've got a credit, you've got a debit, you've got a credit, right? You're preparing all these journal entries. But what happens is, as you're doing this, you're updating what are called ledgers. Now, each one of these accounts that we're get putting a debit to or a credit to is going to have a backup ledger called a, well, a backup ledger called a subsidiary ledger. The idea here is that for every account that you click on, right, so let's go back to cash for a second, every, I'm sorry, every account that you do a journal entry to, if you could almost picture this, this cash right here would have a hyperlink associated with it, all right? And if you were to double click on cash, right, which I'm not going to do on here, but if you were to double click on cash, boom, a cash ledger would come up. And it would have a running total of all of your cash transactions in here. $25,000 going in, maybe $2,000 going out, another $5,000 going in, okay? And that's how that would work. And then you'd go back and you go, okay, well, capital stock got updated too. Double click on capital stock, and you would see this ledger that would have all the th items that affected capital stock. Now, right now, you've only got one entry. But in the future, you could imagine you could have, you know, 100 different entries to cash. Cash coming in, cash coming in, cash going out, cash coming in, all right? So the ledgers which are the supporting statement, which are the supporting books underneath these journal entries, are going to have basically running totals of each of these accounts. Okay, so here we have another transaction. November 5th, Net Solutions bought land for $20,000 paying cash. So you have to say to yourself, okay, I always like to start with cash because cash is cash. There's no question if cash went in or cash went out. Well, in this case, cash went out because you bought land. So with cash as an asset and a decrease to the asset of cash is going to be a credit. Here you go, here's your credit. An increase to the asset of land, oh sorry, I should have said that. Land, what the business is getting is a business is getting land, which is another asset, and that's fine. You're exchanging one asset for another. You're getting the asset of land, and land is increasing then. So if you look to your T account for, for an asset, land is a debit to increase land. So here's your journal entry, debit to land, you're increasing land, and a credit to cash, you're decreasing cash. There's another one. Net Solutions bought supplies on account for thirteen fifty. Now here are the, some magic words here. If you see the words on account, pay special attention. Because on account means you're dealing with an account receivable or an account payable. Well in this case, you bought supplies on account. So you owe somebody one thousand three hundred and fifty dollars. When you owe somebody something, that's an account payable. Alright? So what we got as the business, if you look at this and step back for a second, you know you're dealing with an accounts payable, but on the other side of things, you bought supplies. Well, supplies are an asset to you. I like to think you went to, like, Staples and bought $1,300 in supplies. So you went to Staples, you bought these supplies. Supplies are an asset, so you're going to debit this asset of supplies with a debit. And on the flip side of things, we just decided you had an accounts payable. Well, an accounts payable is a liability type account, and to increase a liability, it's going to be on the right side, which is a credit. Again, I can't strongly suggest enough that you have, from the very beginning of this section, that page printed out or copied down in your notes. Okay, November 18th, Net Solutions received fees of $7,500 from customers for services rendered. So what this means is Net Solutions, I don't know what they do <laughs> to earn their money, but basically they did their job and they got paid for it. So starting with cash, that's an increase to the asset of cash of $7,500. And then the other side of things is when you earn your money, when you're out there and you do your job and you earn it, right, for services rendered, that's going to be revenue. So if you go to the owner's equity side, oh, account, a credit to owner's equity is, or, uh, is revenue or fees earned. Okay, In this example, this particular entry is a good example of how you can have many debits and one credit, and that's fine as long as the accounts balance and you have at least one debit and at least one credit. So here we go. Throughout the month, Net Solutions occur the following expenses. Wage expense, a rent expense, utilities expense, and miscellaneous expense. Well, expenses are on the owner's equity side. It's expenses draw down the value of your business, so they are on the minus side under an owner's equity account. And they are therefore a debit. On the right side, you spent the cash on all of these items, so that's a decrease to cash of, of $3,650. Net Solutions paid creditors 
ding 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 on account nine hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, so you had owed nine you had owed money to people. And you're paying it now. So basically you're writing a check. So here's your decrease to cash, a credit cash of nine hundred and fifty dollars, and a debit to accounts payable